My name's Emily Martin, and I'm taking you behind the scenes to talk to equine artists from around the world. This is Artist Unlocked. Hey, what's up you guys, and welcome back to another episode of Artist Unlocked. This week's guest is Ray of West Wind Studio, and Ray, like I have said a couple of times before now, she is one of my oldest hobby friends, so I was so happy to finally sit down and talk with her. This definitely has to be one of my favorite episodes, and no, I'm not just saying that because I'm biased and I love her work. <laughs> Ray had so many good things to say in this episode when it comes to how to give good critique, working with oils, building a really strong armature, which I think is something that's not talked about enough, is making your customs sturdy so that they will last. And even just things like being in the Briarfest customs contest and what that's like. So yeah, there is just a lot of information packed into this episode. I know it's a bit longer than normal, but feel free to grab a snack, grab a horse to work on while you listen or watch the episode. If you guys watched last week's episode, you might have seen me tease something going on on my Instagram page in the past week. And now that it's live, I will go ahead and share with you guys as well. I'm hosting a giveaway on my Instagram account featuring some Artist Unlocked merch and a special exclusive Briar model kindly donated by the lovely ladies at Briar. Sometimes my life just doesn't feel real and this is definitely one of those moments. So thank you, thank you so much to Briar for um, supporting the show and supporting this giveaway. The giveaway has been live for almost a week now by the time this episode airs and it'll be live for about another week. It closes on Halloween, October 31st, 2020. If you'd like to enter, go ahead over to my page and click on the post that shows the giveaway. There's a few steps that you have to do to join, including subscribing to this YouTube channel, following me on my Instagram, following Briar on their Instagram if you aren't already, and sharing the post. So definitely go ahead, check out that post, make sure you read all of the things to be entered, but there will be two Two winners drawn. One will get an Artist Unlocked hoodie, the Artist Unlocked full sticker collection which is to be revealed, and the Briar exclusive model. And then the second winner will just get an Artist Unlocked hoodie and the sticker collection. So there'll be two winners. I tried to make it so um, that a couple people could win instead of just one. So again definitely go ahead and check out my Instagram if you want to be entered to possibly win those goodies. Alright you guys, that is all the updates I have for today, so without further ado, let's get into the episode. For those who don't know you, go ahead and just introduce yourself, your name, your studio name, what you do, things like that. Okay. Well, I'm well, I'm Kelsey Ray Abelt. My name begins with a C, so I've been going by Ray because everyone butchers Kelsey because it's spelled differently. <laughs> so after so many shows where they announced my name wrong, I was just like, eh, it's Ray. So... <laughs> You can call me whatever you want. Uh, so my studio is Westwind Studio. Uh, it's actually named after a mayor that I had, uh, who unfortunately had to be put down. Um, so she she was sweet and I wanted to honor her in some way. So it's Westwind Studio. And um, I'm mostly on Instagram. I'm, I'm not very good with technology. So Instagram has been the easiest for me to post stuff. Um, I do have a, a Facebook page but I don't post on it nearly as much as I should. So I'm trying to get better at that. Yeah. And I like to mainly sculpt and paint. Uh, that is basically what I've been doing mostly. And I've been showing, I say I don't collect, but you probably can see this shelf behind me. Yes. <laughs> full of ponies. Yes. So <laughs> I, I don't collect OF, I'm typically, get models to paint and sculpt and chop up and redo so yeah totally get you the models yeah. behind me right now are like the few that i've salvaged from my staring ear. yeah i yeah. don't believe her <laughs> they're like they're either like you know my carpet herd that are just really mm -hmm. sentimental that i just don't want to get rid of or they're like random models that i've collected over the years like when i was younger because i think everybody like to some extent starts off with os oh, yes. <laughs> definitely <laughs> so like these are the ones that i like want to keep but mm -hmm. yeah, I'm the same as you. I'm, you know, in it for the customs and the resins now. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so, um, take me along like your journey. How did you get, um, into collecting and then how did that progress into the art side of the hobby? Okay. Well, I've been drawing horses since I was six years old. I was the horse crazy kid in my family, uh, started riding, taking lessons, originally lived in New Jersey. Uh, we were surrounded by horse farms. So 
started taking lessons, then found out I actually first got started with Grand Champions. I don't know if anyone yes, so actually, those they're the cheaper, the cheaper models with the hair, mane, and tails. And then I found out about Briars, got a couple, and pretty soon found out about customizing. I dabbled in etching, which was not my thing, and found out that you could repaint them. And I I did the tricked out pony contest a couple times. Um, I've goodness. So I, I I remember when some of the newer molds started coming out and it was a big deal. So I remember when Weather Girl came out and then she was gonna be in the vault for five years. So, and then I got out of the hobby after that. I just was starting to work and ride more and get into other things. And a few years ago, I think about four or five years ago, I just really wanted, I was just feeling this urge to to paint and sculpt again so i started checking out the hobby and found that it had blown up and i started learning about all these different artists who were really just doing things i'd never seen before on them and i wanted to do that too so i <laughs> i found the giant tote box of bodies at my parents house <laughs> and brought them here i uh live with my husband at um, in the little upstairs apartment uh, with our in-laws. So that's why there's this skylight, sorry. Uh, so just started doing that. Had not so great lighting, uh, just started getting back into it, finding out what materials people were using. I used Gapoxio back when I was doing yes, it before. I've... And then I found out there was epoxy sculpt and then um, tried magic sculpt and found all these people on Instagram. So. Just, I've always, I've always loved horses. I've always been fascinated with their, their anatomy, how they move, how they, they interact. And I just want to capture that. So, yeah. and the emotion and the different personalities. So there's, I'm rambling, but. No, I uh, think that's, yeah. like, that's evident in your work too. Cause one of the things I really admire is like all of your pieces have such personality and emotion. Oh, thank you. Yeah, so that's amazing. <laughs> and I like I like sculpting angry horses, but it's just <laughs> they're awesome, just my aren't thing. they? <laughs> yes, it's and the it's... teeth and the wrinkle. It just I could go on and on. It's really fun, and I'm I'm really glad I got back into it because back when I was younger doing it, there wasn't as much accessibility as there is now. So, so it's true. and I love all the new things everyone is doing because before. Like, I'd never had heard, oh, people are using magnets or suspending them on acrylic rods and stuff. So yeah, it's, I, it's an exciting time it to be is. an artist in the hobby. Yeah, I think the last, you know, few years, especially, like, there's been this huge boom of, like, I think the hobby is becoming more and more, like, tech savvy, whether that's, mm. like, magnets, like you said, <laughs> like, that kind of tech. Um, yes. Or just in general, like the contests that we have and like, obviously we're all like stuck inside with quarantine. And so it's like, mm -hmm. there's more contests I, I see going on. So it's, it's been really cool to see that progression. Cause I think you and I started on Instagram around the same time. I started, I think so. Like it shows that I started in 2014, but I don't think I was like really active until 2015. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so that's been really cool to see. I think I probably start around 2015 because we got married in 2014 so it was yeah. shortly after that I was like honey I want to do this thing he's he, he's been very supportive it's awesome uh, yeah I was gonna ask how how has he uh taken the the horse craziness because I know it's kind of funny to interview like people that have you know significant others and it's like how did you tell them that you collect <laughs> you know or you do stuff with plastic ponies it's like well actually um Jason, my husband, he he's a he's been a horse person. He grew up doing pony club and stuff, and he actually you can probably barely see it in the corner. Oh yeah, that's his that's his briar. He's got Monty Monty the Gem Twist. Oh my god! So gosh. he's he's an old battered OF that he played with, and he gets the spot of honor on the shelf. That's so crazy. he's he's a horse guy. So this was not weird to him at all, and he's very supportive and very encouraging, and it's awesome. Aww. So that's amazing. You don't see that very often, too. That he like he was totally no, he, like in that world already. <laughs> yeah, he, he he's never collected. He doesn't 
want to collect, but he's very supportive. Yeah. So I appreciate it. That's great. <laughs> he supports the, the studio and because <laughs> Oh I he gives he gives me weird ideas too. He he jumps in there. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> Because, like, I can't imagine what it would be like to not have somebody that's, like, openly supportive of it. Because it's, like, it does kind of take, if, if you want to have, like, a dedicated room for it, it does take a certain amount of, like, mess and, and things yeah. to, to do it. So I, really... try, I try not to take over the whole teeny space that we live in. Yeah. Um, which I have two tables. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> hey, that's better than... Very, a... He's very understanding. I really appreciate it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and in... My family and his family is also supportive too. Like they, they don't know as much about it as I do just because I've been the horse crazy kid since I was, well, I'm sorry. His family is very horse knowledgeable. Um, I'm the only horse, horsey person on my side of the family. His whole family grew up riding. So, um, so they, they have a big appreciation from it just as horse people. And then my family has always been really supportive of my art. I mean, you don't want to know how many sketchbooks my parents bought me <laughs> over the years. That's great though. Cause I'm, I'm the only like real horse crazy person in my family. Mm -hmm. My grandmother on my dad's side, she, she's an artist and she can like, she sketches and she likes horses too, but she never like really got into the riding side of it as much. Mm -hmm. She kind of will just do like trail rides every once in a while, but yeah. So it's nice to have a family that like supports you even though they don't like get it as much per se. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my, we used in New Jersey, my mom took me and my younger sister on those trail rides that you could do. So she, she was very brave. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Is your family like, I know if I get my non-horse family near horses, they're very like wary of them, which is always a weird thing for me because I'm just so used to being around them. I don't even like think about how yeah, big they are anymore. <laughs> I know I get that and I I sometimes read horse better than I can read people. So Amen. They they're they're cautious. They're not no one no one's like scared or anything. But yeah. they also haven't come out a lot to see the horses, but they they've come to shows and watched me do stuff, so Yeah, cuz you have you have two of your own or Yes. Yeah, I have a well, he's technically my husband's uh El Dorado, who we affectionately call Dorito. Um, and then Savvy, so he's a Dutch warm blood, she's a Tricaner mare, mm -hmm. and, um, yeah, so she, I need to, I need to get her out and do more stuff with her. She's, <laughs> she's very green, but she's very sweet. Yeah. It's, do you find that having them, like, do you board them somewhere, or are they, like, in your backyard? Nope, they're here at the farm. That's awesome. Yeah. I, that's a dream of mine one day. Do you find that, like, having them in the backyard is helpful from like the art side of things. Cause I know a oh, lot of people yes. say like, you can just go out there and like, go look at them. <laughs> that's, that's what I was, that was going to be something I brought up in tips is I think, um, when you are used to having your hands on a horse all the time, you learn the nuances, you learn, I mean, hair direction, uh, just the way where things are firmer, where things are looser, or things, you know, how how things tilt, how they move. If riding helps too, because you can feel that shift and that weight bearing and that movement. Uh, I I love having horses here. Sometimes I'll just watch them. I'll just watch. You know, you you learn the weird little things like when they drink and their ears do that little twitch thing. Yeah. <laughs> so it's it's fun, and they all have different personalities. Uh, there's six horses total on the farm, ranging from a huge 17 two hand off track thoroughbred to a 30 year old Shetland pony who's <laughs> still plotting and scheming. Yes. <laughs> uh, and they're, they're all different. They all have different personalities. They all have different features. It's really cool to see the differences and the similarities. So yeah. I always recommend if you can get your hands on a horse or just watch videos or just interact with them and learn those little details, do it because yeah. it makes a difference. Yeah. I think it helps kind of bridge the gap between like, I know when I first started sculpting, I think when you're first starting, you're kind of consumed by like how to do it. Like, mm -hmm. what do you use and how do I even just do this? And so then like, you're not maybe as focused on the anatomy side of things. And mm -hmm. then you kind of swing back. And once you get comfortable with the materials, like you then start to dive into like, okay, like, like the biomechanics and like how they move. And if you, like you said, if you have that experience already of being around horses mm -hmm. and, um, that just helps to bridge the gap and I feel like it's a little bit easier to make connections about how they move 
reading it in a book and then you know it in real life. So I don't know. I just find that easier. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm I'm a visual learner for sure. I I'm I can learn in multiple ways. I love reading. I I love watching videos. I also like doing hands on, and uh, it's. Like even if you just pick up their foot and you can feel how the heel bulbs go and the cleft and you know how it flexes and where if they put weight it makes the tendons stand out it's really valuable and i'm really grateful i have them here and that i've spent a lot of my life riding yeah so and interacting and grooming and bathing <laughs> yeah all the things. I, this is like totally a side i don't even know if i'll keep this in but like you mentioned you had like you have a shetland pony on your farm yes the barn that i have been riding at for like the last gosh 12 years they have like a shetland pony like breeding program like they're known for like have you ever seen like um the Washington International Horse Show, they have like the Shetland Pony races. Yeah, like, I've, I've seen that sort of thing, yeah. The little yeah. steeplechase. Yes. Yes. So, so like the farm, if you ever see um, Olney, it's O-L-N-E-Y, like in front of any of the names, that's the farm that I ride at. So they, they train. Oh, it's so that's cool. so cool. Yeah, and it's funny because like the little kids grow up like riding on them and then mm -hmm. like this year we have uh two babies and like the barn is shut down if you're not a leaser or a boarder which I'm not leasing anything currently so I'm like mm -hmm. so sad because I just want to go see the babies so bad <laughs> <laughs> they're so cute but it's just funny you mentioned Shetland ponies because they're a personality evil <laughs> yes they are evil <laughs> she I I joke that uh, her name's Shandy I joke that she runs on sheer spite she's gonna outlive everybody out of sheer yeah. spite she will she will run for the gate oh she will she so will bust bad. through i was leading one of the big horses through and she busted through and ran around the yard like you're rude yeah they are <laughs> they're just and it's funny like i'll be watching like some seven-year-old try to lead it down the walkway and you just whoop right to the grass like, yep <laughs> and see care. i when i started riding uh lessons i was 10 and i was pretty tall so they didn't really put me on ponies like my little sister was a lot smaller than me, so she rode like the nasty ponies, and I didn't really get that experience. <laughs> it reforms you, I feel. <laughs> I yeah. In fact, uh, I didn't really ride pony regularly until I became a working student for um, uh, for about nine months in right before I got married, um, and uh, we had this little cow pony she was technically a quarter horse but she was only 14 one and i learned a lot from her oh i'm sure she <laughs> was <lot>. sassy <laughs> oh yes she should have been chestnut she was gray she should have been chestnut <laughs> uh i miss riding so much i haven't ridden in, in like months because Aww. of this and i just because it's oh, so nice get to ride like, soon thank you yeah it's so nice today it's like 70 degrees and it's like Ooh. not humid which is like a rare thing over here so it's Anyway, tangent aside, I just, yep. <laughs> I envy that you have them just in your backyard. <laughs> it is a lot, like, it is a lot of work. Um, Dorito through a shoe, so, you know, carrier's coming later. Yeah. Week. So, you just, it's, it's more to do, but I, I like all aspects of it, so. Yeah. I, I love the grooming, I love the feeding, I love all of it, so. Yeah. Well, so, coming back. <laughs> yeah, that was a tangent. <laughs> I know, it's great, though. I, I'm enjoying this just because we haven't gotten to talk face to face. Yeah. So it's like nice to get to know you. Um, so some people haven't wanted to share like a least favorite side of the hobby, but at least a favorite. What's your favorite side of the hobby? Okay. Um, I have a few. I have a few elements to both. <laughs> I'll, I'll share. Yeah. Um, <laughs> definitely. I love. I love the the three C's: uh, creativity, community, and collaboration. Like. There's so many cool pieces out there. Uh, some of the artists I love are Jen Scott, Sarah Mink, uh, Kylie Parks, Amanda Brock. All, I mean, you're, a lot of people are familiar with these artists. I love how they're trying new things. They're doing innovative things and it's inspiring. I look at it and I say, I wanna do something like that. Not in a copycat, do exactly what they do fashion, but it just, it pushes me to, uh, try do th different things and try new things and explore and even if you mess up and it doesn't work at least you tried and you found out how it doesn't work so that you can try it a different way etc uh, community I know so I've met a lot of people in this hobby who are so willing to share things 
I have a group of friends where we uh, bounce things off each other. I have good friends who will tell me if something doesn't look right. They'll say, eh, your angles are wrong, head's too big, stuff like that. It's really good to have friends that can tell you that tactfully so that you can change it. Yes. And then collaboration, even even if it's just we're we're bouncing those ideas off each other. What what color would you want to see on this model? What what weird new thing would you like to see this do? You know, oh, what do you mean you want to take this model and turn it into something completely different? Just do it. We're I've I've got a few friends who are super encouraging and I really love that. Uh because it pushes me to improve, it pushes me to do better. Yeah. That's my personality anyway, but it's fun to have friends who will say, hey, let's try this. Uh, and every, uh, I feel like the lion's share of people are very encouraging. Most people are gonna say, oh, that looks great. You know, keep going. Um, I will say probably least favorite, I feel like I'm, my husband teases that I'm aggressively optimistic. <laughs> so I'm, always moving forward yeah and I don't like negativity and I feel like it's very easy especially on social media for people to just say oh that's ugly oh I hate yeah. it I'm a big fan of constructive criticism yes which the pony club way is you say what you like then you give your critique you know you say oh that was really nice need to work on this and then you end on a good note yes I see and I think it's just a cultural thing with uh, social media is people just tend to go blah this is my opinion yeah I'm gonna say it because I can and that is your right but it could tact is tact is a very nice thing <laughs> so oh, yeah. it makes a huge difference yes don't tell someone their horse is ugly you can tell them good job but the back is too short or right you know your proportions are off you can find a way and Sometimes you can just keep it to yourself. This and this, I'm saying this is this is what I tell myself. You being me, because uh, there are times where I'm very analytical, so I will look at a piece and go, "Oh, I like this. Ooh, that seems off." But I don't feel the need to say it every single time. Yeah, I think it's like um, I forget. Someone else was saying kind of like a similar thing of just there. Definitely is a time to give criticism, and there's also a time to like not, but also. Mm -hmm. The way you give it is so like valuable because mm -hmm. if like a lot of times I know at least for me personally like if I'll post something a lot of times like there will be times where I know something about it is a little off mm -hmm. and I'm not really sure and then someone will just point it out in a way that's like not nice yes like but thank you I already knew <laughs> <laughs> I know thank you for rubbing salt in that wound yeah <laughs> Whereas, like, if you do it, like you said, and you have, like, positives and then, like, the constructive criticism, mm -hmm. like, that stuff is so valuable. Like, um, it pushes you to be a better artist and it, like, teaches you, like, what to look for because really, like, and I think people get paralyzed to, um, myself included sometimes, of, mm -hmm. of feeling like when you do it, like, the first time, like, that's the only time, that's the only shot you have, you can't redo anything. When in reality, like, sure, maybe you wasted a little bit of clay but mm -hmm. you can just go and dremel it off and start again. And nine times out of 10, it's going to be better than when you oh, yeah. first try. Oh yeah. Yeah. So I just, I would, I would like to see more, more truly constructive, constructive. It helps you get better criticism than just, ew, this is ugly. I hate it. And you know what? People have opinions. Their, their models are just like, mm, not my cup of tea. Uh, and then and then I would, I would love to see, I feel like people get caught up in, in the perfection. Like this model has to have no flaws. This model, you, it's just not perfect because horses are not perfect. Right. I can tell you, I can give you a list of the bumps and bruises on my horse. Uh, <laughs> he, he sunburns too. There's just these little things like real horses have. That's one thing I love about uh, Hawk, Maggie Bennett scan. He has a bowed tendon. Yeah, and it's on like, one of his four legs, and horses can be fine. Horses can function perfectly well, being having a recovery. Of course, he's a recovered bow. Yeah, and I'm, ra I'm rambling. Now. No, no, no. <laughs> I, I know. I agree. I think. I think like there's this pressure to like make these anatomically correct horses like 
100% down mm. to every little jot and tittle. And it's like, yeah, like the horse that I ride, Crockett, like he's kind of weird confirmation mm. wise. He doesn't maybe move the best, but it's like, that's not why we always like want to be around horses. Mm -hmm. It's not all about like the confirmation. And it, so I think like if you're able to capture like the soul of the horse in mm -hmm. your heart, that's what's going to speak to people. Yeah. It doesn't invalidate him as a horse. He may, yeah. you know, I've, I do eventing casually. I've yeah. not been showing lately, but the upper level horses are not perfect. They're not blemish free. And even, even if they aren't perfect in some ways, they can be perfectly useful at lower levels. You know, you could have a horse that all they can do is trail ride. That's fine. Yeah. Um, and also uh, just as a finish, like I have, and this is partly because I am such a perfectionist. Um, I'm learning to be okay with my prep work, not being 110% perfect. I've not yet met a model that's completely perfect. And I think it's silly to have a gorgeous uh, representation of a beautiful coat, beautiful breed, beautiful sculpting, and you get hung up on one spec because it's not perfectly smooth. I, I think it's, uh, you're, you're throwing out the baby with the bath water. Yeah, you're, you're <laughs> so <preach>. I, <laughs> I would like to see when I judge, if I see a horse that is beautiful, confirmationally, really fits, real, super realistic, and it has a cat hair or a speck of dust or a wee scratch, if it's not super duper, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, if it's not like critical, <laughs> critically affecting the finish, I would place that above something that isn't as good but has a perfect finish, if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, I think... So. Like, I know um, Blue Mountain Stables, <laughs> Kristen, I think her name is, um, She her prep work is, like, amazing. And I mm -hmm. don't understand how she gets it that good. And it's like, that's like, I aspire to be like her, but it's like, like you, I have to kind of, like, take a step back mm -hmm. and, and be like, okay, like, you spent so much time on this. It's not going to per be perfect. It's just not. Yeah. Like, you'll be sitting there standing forever until it's, like, no yeah. longer a horse if you're going to. Yes. And you can always you can always improve on the next one. Like, I've yeah. learned that my prepping is getting better. Uh, but sometimes you just have to let it go and move on. And go yeah. do the next thing. So true. So. So, do you have, what are your favorite, um memories and like maybe embarrassing moments some funny things happen you know <laughs> the tea <laughs> the tea ooh uh i think well the thing is i i have gone to shows with such low expectations for my work that anytime a horse places i'm super excited <laughs> so i think one of my favorite moments was it's a little bit embarrassing because i was wrong Last year at Briarfest, I, I, I entered the custom contest, didn't get in, but I brought my Bronk entry to show at the live show because I said she's not in the contest, so I'll show her. I was kind of hoping she would maybe win me a prize model. Yeah. Because I felt like I had really grown as an artist and had improved. So I showed her. She placed third, which in the Mustang in, or the other stock. Um, which was really, really, I was happy with it. I was a little bummed. I was like, oh, darn, I thought she would place. And then I didn't have a very big show string, so we finally got to fantasy, and I put my unicorn, my angry unicorn, on the table. <laughs> and she had not placed the year before at all. She didn't get anything. It was super, super tough last year. Or, the, I'm sorry, the year previous. But this year they had split it up, so... There was a unicorn class and a, and a Pegasus class, et cetera. So I thought, we'll try it. Uh, I texted my husband and said, I put the last horse on the table, so I'm basically done. You can come pick me up. He gets there 10 minutes later. She had won her class. <laughs> so I pointed at her. I said, I lied. <laughs> we had to wait <laughs> for callbacks. So she goes back and um, she ends up getting reserve champion of the fantasy division when Takeshi won the champ. So <sighs> I cried. Yeah, uh, <laughs> that's amazing. And I was one of those, I was kind of chatting with someone 
the also other embarrassing aspect of this. I was chatting with someone because I was nervous. You know, it's Briarfest Live. My horse is on the callback. There's these amazing horses. Yeah. And the judge, I didn't, I actually didn't hear my name get called. And I saw, but I saw the judge put the glossy Harley on the, t is it, was it Harley? The, I, think, um, I think so. The black Appy Frisian. Yeah. Yes. Um, Whatever. Yeah, I don't you know. You know who I'm talking about. Yes. <laughs> and she put it up behind my, my unicorn and I went, what? <laughs> <Hold> on. <laughs> so it was really cool. Uh, I need to fix her horn. Her horn broke. So, oh, no. but she's, and she's done, like, she's done way better than I ever thought. She's won, she won the entire custom division at a show. Wow. She's just one of those things where I wasn't expecting that horse to win. And that's happened a bunch of times. I feel oh, like yeah. that's always been, this horse is going to do well. No, and then <laughs> this, do horse, this horse doesn't do well. Uh, I have another story where a friend, I joked, I said, I'm not putting the ugly horse on the table because I wasn't happy with her dapple job. She ended up champing the whole division. <laughs> it always happens like, like that, doesn't it? No. <laughs> I tell her, I still tell her occasionally, I'm like, I'm still mad about that horse winning. <laughs> yeah, you're like, what? Because like, <laughs> I don't feel like I deserved that. So, <laughs> yeah. so yeah, that's, and just memories with uh, friends. We, uh, there was another show where uh, one of the friends, her, um, her cars, her car keys got locked in her car and it was the end of the, sh the show. It was a long day and yeah. we just sat in a circle on the floor until the locksmith came. So <laughs> there's just been, been really fun adventures with different people. Um, and that's that's what I have the most fond memories of is is fun stuff with friends. Yeah, moving on to like your workspace. This is the part that personally I love. I like selfishly mm -hmm. love this part of the show because I love seeing how people work. So tell me about your studio. Has it always been like this? All that stuff. Okay. Do you want and you want me to send you pictures? Because I think if yes. I try to pan, it's gonna be no. Awkward. You're good. Um, okay. Yeah. Just tell me and we can answer clips and stuff. So, no, it has not always been the current setup. I feel like it's still very much a work in progress. Uh, now, ha, I, I got this old table for free, and uh, which was awesome. So I was mostly working on that. I didn't have the greatest lighting. Uh, it's, it's kind of transitioned in pieces and, and phases. So it used to actually, I think, be on the opposite wall. And then we moved the apartment around. So I had this free table. So I was mostly working on that. But for my birthday, I asked for a workbench. And so I have a table and a and this really it's six foot long workbench, which is awesome. Yes. So now I have set up stations because the thing that was really keeping me from progressing on stuff was I'd have to pull out all my painting stuff and do all the painting and yes. then I'd have to put it all away and then do sculpting or then uh, I I still do my dremeling priming ceiling outside because yeah, that stuff's nasty <laughs> yeah and we don't need any more we don't need bits of plastic flying around in the house I just <laughs> so and I always you know I, dr I have got my respirator and goggles and I usually <laughs> end up wearing a plastic garbage bag just so yeah. I don't get completely covered oh it's ugh, it gets everywhere which would probably look really suspicious if the neighbors could see me but <laughs> my neighbors can definitely see me I'll go out in my driveway and I cannot imagine what they think I must I, I probably look like a serial killer or something yep. like, yep. with, like plastic pony bits yep like this girl has issues but yeah <laughs> don't we all it's so <laughs> so now I have a setup where I have the one table is mainly the painting and I have my airbrush set up with the booth. Uh, I did get a, sh a spray booth. Really important. Yeah. Uh, so it's, it's not perfect because I still had to do a little finagling to pull out the booth and set up the airbrush. But now it's, now it's set up where all my airbrush stuff is in one spot and all my oils is in one spot. And I have a drawer where I stow my brushes and my uh, Perlex pigment. And then the workbench has turned into my sculpting station. And there's a little space where I have some horses in the midst of painting that are lined up in the corner. And then, um, and I covered everything with butcher paper because I don't want to destroy it. the table surfaces. Yeah. <laughs> so I've got my my 
horses that are in the midst of sculpting. I've got a little shelf with the micros on top and various parts. Like I have this cool little shelf thing, which I'll show you a picture of. And that's where I'll put like little base pieces and spare parts that I don't want to lose track of. Yeah. And my brushes and school sculpting tools, the, um, I love, Magic Sculpt is my favorite. I've tried various different clays. Magic Sculpt is my go-to. I know some people don't like it. It doesn't work for everybody, but it's my favorite. Yeah. And, uh, and rubbing alcohol, which is hard to get a hold of. So I actually have a bottle of vodka under here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It works. works. It works. Yeah. So, because water water makes my magic sculpt get all crumbly, so yeah. and it gets soggy. So I found that an alcohol based solvent works best. Maybe that's my issue then. Maybe I should be mm -hmm. transitioning to that. Um, yeah. But you're right. It's like hard to come by. Yeah, it, it evaporates faster than water. I think that's the main thing. Mm. So yeah. it doesn't get in the in the clay and yeah, just it turned into the soggy gross mess. Yeah. <laughs> and then I have a little shelf, which is a little rickety that basically horses that are drying will sit there or horses, you know, they're, so they're out of the way. They're not in the way when I'm sculpting. Yeah. That's one of my issues right now is like, I have a small little desk, mm -hmm. like literally five feet that way is like yeah. my work station area, but I have to kind of plan out where they're going to sit to dry. Mm -hmm. Cause I do not trust them to like sit. I like I could put them downstairs in the basement, but like my family's down there, and I'm like I don't trust them to like yeah. not accidentally touch one by accident. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and I've I've had it where you know I put a horse aside in a safe place, I think, and then I come back later and it's fallen over and ruined part of it. But that's it's just part of part of the journey. Yeah, <laughs> you, you just had to fix it and move on. It's fine. Yeah. So. Um, I think that's basically, it will probably change by the time this video airs, it probably will have changed <laughs> in some way. So I know you kind of mentioned it a little bit, but, um, what mediums do you use? Like, what's the primary thing for you? Like, what's your process with that? Okay. Uh, sculpting, painting, or both? Um, both. Okay. Uh, well, sculpting for sure is magic sculpt. That is my favorite epoxy. Um... I love clay shapers. They are my favorite because I don't know. I don't, was I when I first started. I was mostly doing it with my fingers, and you cannot get the detail that you can get with those with your fingers that you can with the clay shapers. So that's hands down probably my favorite tool. I'm still exploring. Like um, I think Raven Matic recommended one of those little gum stimulators. They're the little yes. This. Yes, they. One that's of these. What she so used. I haven't tried it yet. Isn't that what she used to sculpt that like micro face, which I was blown away. Probably, about. probably. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna try that out. Uh, I love using brushes, makeup brushes, regular brushes. That's definitely something I would tell people try different things because at first I was just using the makeup brushes, but then I found like a, the chisel end brush is actually really useful because you can get into um, crevices and stuff like with manes and hair. Rubbing alcohol for the sol solvent because water doesn't work for me. And then I would definitely play with different wires for armatures. Um, I've gotten, I forget what the name of it is for these. Um, I went to Home Depot and got these metal rods. I don't think it's rebar. It's something, I forget the name of it. But that's actually what's in my Mustang's legs is this very heavy duty wire Oh, because okay. I wanted to make sure they were very, they had a very strong support. So if you're looking, because I've, I've had horses break. Because oh, no. uh, I don't, Southpaw was the first custom contest entry I did. He's the buckskin bronc. Uh, and I dremeled down the model's legs and sculpted over them. And three out of four of those broke off at some point. Mm, because the plastic dremel, I dremeled down was too weak to support the, the epoxy Which so is interesting, i went because he's like mm -hmm. fully suspended also yeah well when you drop him <laughs> he's okay his body <laughs> and i think what, at one point i was holding holding him by uh, the legs and one snapped so yeah definitely learning process i've redone his legs they all have uh wire supports now he he got a makeover he, I, Painting him. Maybe yeah. by the time this airs, he'll be finished. Uh, 
so definitely look into your supports. I mean, it is no fun to have a really cool wispy mane and tail and then it snaps because it doesn't have support. Yeah. Uh, my favorite thing for doing crazy hair that I recently got into is it's aluminum sheeting. So it's not aluminum foil, it's thicker. I get it off Amazon. It was recommended to me by Hannah Tripp. Uh, it's I'm probably saying her, her username wrong but Helodoxia studio yeah so she because i asked her how she did the wings on that uh hippogriff last year and yeah. she said it was aluminum sheeting so i hope okay. i'm not giving her secrets away <laughs> it's, it's okay. but she she recommended that and um so skull that's sculpting um i'm still learning i'm still exploring and trying new things i'm not a big fan of that mesh because i feel like the epoxy sinks into it and makes it heavier and it cuts me to bits if i try to tear it cut it we're not friends. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> as far as painting, um, I used to basically just do oils. It would take about 20 layers to build up to a true deep color though. So I got an airbrush uh, about a year ago and I love it. I'm still learning. I am not by any means refined with it. I do not think I'm ever going to pursue just doing airbrush. I've seen some artists do amazing jobs with it. Yeah. I want to know their secrets so I'm going to be watching the show and if anyone <laughs> says anything about airbrushing I will be paying attention but it makes putting base coats down so much easier mm -hmm. so that then I seal it and then I start building up the oils which add that glow but it cuts time way down yeah and then I usually mix pearl x pigment in my oils because it adds a sheen it helps them dry faster I've do a lot of pencil if I'm doing like my roans are hand penciled on top of their oils. I'm sure you Takes... are blind after doing that. <laughs> Actually, well, lately I think I'm getting more. I think I'm getting more nearsighted because of it. <laughs> I'm focusing here so much. It's like, what is that? Who are you? Yeah, um, right. <laughs> I work for an eye doctor, so that's nice. Oh, um, but. I, I love pencil and it's it's easy because I don't have the my technique down and this is something I'm probably gonna work on. I don't have the technique to hand to to paint roan roaning or fine detail. I feel like my I just I don't have the ability to do it to that level with paint that I can get it with pencil. Yeah. So that is that is something I wanna get better at. But it's mostly oils. I am not friends with acrylics. I do not like working with acrylics. I do it if I have to, but we don't, we're not friends. Because <laughs> uh, I know everyone says, oh, you have to do all these millions of tiny layers to, to do whites, and I hate it. So I've been trying to do it with oils. Okay. So that's still a learning curve. Mm. Um, I you have a... Do you find it goes on faster and like easier? Like what are the pitfalls of doing it with oils? Cause that's interesting you mentioned you, that. Patience. You have yeah. to, if you do one layer, you have to wait a day or maybe two cause white takes longer to do it. But I have, let's see, where's she at? <laughs> so this one, mm. she, she's all oils. And I've been yeah. really happy with it. She's still a work in progress. Yeah, she's um, gorgeous. And you probably can't see her pinking as well. But I'm I'm liking it so far. And I know I think Sandra, because I, I asked Sandra Hottinger of CS Rich CS Richmond Studios. I asked what she uses. She all all oils. Okay, so, interesting. So I want yeah. to be in that vein because I really don't get along with acrylics. So they take so many layers, and I feel like no matter how thin I make the paint, it always looks brush strokey to some degree. Mm -hmm. And, and oils are really easy to soften up and smooth out. So true. Yeah. I know. I, I, I'm a fan of oils. I think I told you I'm trying to save up for an airbrush because I want to do kind of like what mm -hmm. you're doing. Because you're right. Like, it, yeah. I, oh my goodness. It takes so long to build up any color. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, it <laughs> yeah. My, <laughs> my, first, my first resin was all oils. And he was a very blonde. He was a thunderbutt. And I did want to do a very blonde... Belgian chestnut with all the pangair, or however yeah. you say it. And I used red primer, so <laughs> twenty <laughs> layers. It took about twenty layers oh, no. before he was really covered up. So 
I don't want to do that anymore. Especially like I have so many projects right now. Yeah. It's, it's it's horrifying. That's Um, the other thing though. I'm the same way. And I just can't afford to just like wait three days in between each layer. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Uh, The Pearlex pigment really works for me. Like usually by the next day, my oils are dry. Yeah. So I know depending on the color, if it's white or metallics, they tend to take a day or two longer, but for the most part, my horses are dry the next day and ready yeah. for a second layer. So great. I don't know. Also, we live in the top part of the house, so it gets hot up here. Mm-hmm. And that might actually be cutting down my time. <laughs> yeah, my room gets so warm too. And I also, the other thing about Perlex is that like, it's it's way less toxic than the cobalt dryer that I was using. Mm-hmm. I yeah, I stopped using I, cobalt. I cannot believe I used that for like three years and like was not aware about how dangerous mm-hmm. it was. Yeah, I, I threw mine out. Yeah, and plus, too. oh, I once spilled it on my desk. Woo! <laughs> oh, no, no. <laughs> and it's expensive, too. So, yeah. yeah. So, so I, I definitely use Pearlex because it adds such a pretty sheen, too. Like, it adds... Yeah. I did, like, I love what it does with Palominos. Yeah, it glow. the oil is light, and it just adds a little shimmer. Yeah. So. yeah. Agreed. <laughs> and then... Let's see, as far as I have an Iwata airbrush with one of those little Ninja compressors. I use golden high flow acrylics because I don't want to bother with mixing my own because I've heard of people having super messy issues with that where it clogs and stuff. Uh, As far as brushes go, I don't spend a whole lot of money on brushes. I... I will spend a little more for the detail ones. Yeah. Like I definitely invested in a few Kalinsky Sable ones. And I, again, I don't spend a ton of money, but spending 10 bucks on a brush, that's, you know. It's worth it. <laughs> it but it helps because they hold it better. You you don't go in to paint a stable mate eye and then <laughs> bristle goes and goes, Phew! So it definitely helps to have some very good quality brushes, but for the most part, I've even bought those 50 packs at Michael's and because what I do, which I do with an illustration, is I am tapping the paint on like this and it beats up the brushes. So I'd rather have some cheap brushes that are on the smoother side that I can just tap, stipple it on and then smooth it out. And if they die, they die. They didn't spend too much money on them. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I tend, if I do go to Michael's and buy brushes that are standalone, I get acrylic brushes because oil mm-hmm. brushes tend to have that rough, they're a little rougher because when you're painting oil on canvas, it's different than painting on a smooth surface. Yeah. So I go for the acrylic brushes. Yeah, and that's then, interesting you say that. And I, as far as types of paint, I get Windsor and Neuter, New, Windsor and Neuter, <laughs> Windsor and Newton. <laughs> Spay your pets. <laughs> oh, you should have a blooper reel. Yes. Oh my gosh. Windsor and Newton and then Grumbacher. Because that's what's mostly available at my little arch store and I like them. So yeah. I I don't spend a ton on oil paint either. I don't get the cheapest, but I don't get the super duper expensive stuff. Yeah, and I'm still playing. Like I'm still exploring different types and stuff. So um, take it all with a grain of salt. Um, and I used Dolco basically. I haven't yeah, found a I, perfect I, alternative sealer, but I fiddled with some. There was one that I was supposed to give a satin finish, and it made my horse way too glossy so I hit her with a little bit of dull coat and that actually brought her down to the perfect satiny balance so I'm I'm playing with those okay yeah because I for the longest time I was using a uh, Krylon mat and I like had some yeah. issues with it and I was like yeah so I've switched to dull coat now which they come in like little beanie I know I know and they run out so fast I know. um oh I have another embarrassing story <laughs> yeah go for it <laughs> <laughs> that reminds me um I was entered. This was actually a few. This was quite a few years back. One of the tricked out pony contests, and I made, I made a three headed pink unicorn. And I was gonna seal it, and silly me, 
grabbed a spray adhesive and not a sealer. So that oh, horse didn't make no. it into that contest. <laughs> oh no. That was the worst thing ever. That was, I think that was wor <laughs> probably worse. I would find that worse than spraying primer on a, instead of sealer on a horse. It was, it's awful. That body is somewhere, that body is somewhere in a body box and I don't know if I'll ever be able to salvage it. Did you like, at what point did you realize what you had done? Was it like as soon as you sprayed it or was no, it No, like it was after. It's like, why is this horse sticky? Oh no. Three yeah, hours later, it's still sticky. Oh no. Because <laughs> like that's like if you sprayed primer at least, you could kind of like paint over it and eventually like get mm -hmm. back to where you were. Oh yeah. But, like the oh my gosh, adhesive. Yeah. Like it's bad. I'm so sorry. It's bad. It's, that was that was years ago. <sighs> so yeah. yeah. Watch your labeling. I I would cry. And it was it was Krylon, so I I was running into Michael's real quick and grabbed it and didn't even it was like it, the, the label looked like it yeah yeah oh so sorry that that happened that is it's a it, learning it's you learn true they're just <laughs> you'll never do that again at the end of the day they are just model horses and you know if it happened to goodness my Leonardo or something I'd be even more bummed but yeah you could probably strip him yeah so. But yeah, that was a fun learning experience. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I would have to like take a few minutes and just like, <laughs> just breathe <laughs> and be like, I'm not going to throw it out the window. I'm not uh, gonna it was like, well, I feel dumb. Yeah. So. Uh, well, I think you covered a bunch of the tools too. So unless there's like something specific that you feel. I would, like and my th try new things. Uh, mm -hmm adapt adapt or die uh, <laughs> i sculpted i sculpted a micro mini and i used a clay shaper and a pin to sculpt the tail wow so you use whatever you know try toothpicks try i mean try a funny tool i have some of those little dental tools that you can get so yeah they're good try try different stuff yeah i think there's like this expectation almost that like you we have to use the set materials and tools that other people are using yeah. and like I talked to uh Erica performance fanatic mm -hmm. she's awesome and she's awesome she's she, one of my besties yeah in the hobby mm -hmm. she's so great I like I wish I lived like not so east coast because there's definitely like, yeah. a chunk but I feel like the people that I've been talking to on Instagram like they're far away from me and it's sad. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway she said like um she's trying to figure out a way to use like watercolor and i just mm -hmm. think that's so cool like and that kind of i was like yeah why not like i think we get stuck in the perception that you have to use what other people are using and the only yeah. way that we're gonna grow is if you just try something yeah and you'll find too for anyone who's starting or getting into it you will find stuff that works for you and stuff does not work for you like i cannot stand acrylics it's irrational but we are not we don't get along i i feel like i'm fighting it and then i switch to oils and i was like ah this is it this is it so and she is uh, erica's we we've, we've we're always um talking about stuff we joke that we're from the the school of winging it because that's <laughs> what i do Amen. i just do just like yeah try this if it doesn't work it doesn't work and uh She's always doing weird stuff. She's like, ah, I'm going to try this. And I get to watch from the sidelines and it's really fun. Yeah, it's so cool. <laughs> um, yeah, so do you have a favorite or a least favorite scale to work in? Or do you like them all? <laughs> I, goodness, I think I like them all for the most part. Um, I think for a while I thought traditional is better because it's bigger i'll never get into micros and now i have micros i would say i think the size that surprised me is the curio little bit size i love resins that size they are me so too. fun to paint they're so fun to customize i still really enjoy the bigger guys i will say <laughs> I like them until I start painting them and there's so much surface to cover. Uh -huh. <laughs> so that is definitely something. It, there's pros and cons with all of them. I feel like the really small stuff is harder for, is less fun for me to sculpt because I just get frustrated if I can't get that tiny detail just yeah. right. And then I love traditional because you can get 
pack so much detail on body texture and stuff into it. So I, I like them all. I don't think I'll ever be one of those people who's super into the itsy bitsy, ridiculously tiny, less than micro mini size yeah. or the, <laughs> I don't think I'm really honestly interested in one six scale because me either huge. That is I have, just so daunting. <laughs> I actually bought an Eberol not knowing that he was larger traditional and <sighs> oh no. I was not expecting him to be that big. <laughs> you open the box, you're like, oh. and he's heavy. He's heavy. Oh yeah. So I imagine like holding him up to paint anything. Oh yeah, and he decided he wanted to be leopard happy, so you know. Oh, of course, right? <laughs> he said so. So some of them just tell you. Some of them are just like, nope, you can't do any other color. So this so is true. gonna be it. Yeah. So I would say I like all scales. Uh, I have a fondness for curio and traditional. I would say. Yeah, I, I'm with you with the Curio. I think there should be more in that scale because they're kind of a good mix in between. Yeah. You get the detail, but they're not so daunting to paint. <laughs> yeah, and, and Classic's fun too. So I'm I'm kind of, I, I like them all. Yeah. <laughs> I, I will say, I, I did say I will never customize a micro and then I ended up breaking the tail off a fidget. So I ended up giving her a little ratty appy tail and it so actually cute. turned out pretty cool. Yeah, so, it did, it looks great. Um, so she'll she'll be getting painted soon. I wanted to talk about too your Briarfest uh, customs entry for this year because they just got released and it's amazing. And I want you to walk me through like what was it like to make them? Thank you. Um, well, they're they're over on oh, the there table there. <laughs> Use my slouchy couch. You're good. <laughs> so, um, well. Eric, Erica is one of the people that's in my little chat group. So we're, we're, we had big aspirations after Briarfest last year because I think we both entered and both didn't make it in. Um, she's been a finalist once before, but we have a little chat group. Um, and actually, Nickel was a finalist last year. She was, she had that huge yeah. Frisian uh, yeah. out of the Cleveland Bay. Insane. And I don't, I don't know. Pray for her wrists. I know. <laughs> like, I can't imagine holding that. <laughs> so, so we always like after Briarfest, we're like, okay, what, what are we gonna do next time? And I was thinking, okay, I've done two Bronx. Do I want to do another Bronx? And then I thought, I've always wanted to do a pair of fighting mustangs. So I said, what about fighting mustangs? And since Kylie had done the two horses, I was like, well, they they can let you do two horses now. So I'll I'll do mustangs. So. We definitely were throwing ideas back and forth, and I had a picture in my mind. I had some reference inspiration. They, they are not directly from one reference. They are a culmination of several references. Because I, I tend to do that with horses anyway, because I don't want people to just say, oh, you copied that thing exactly. Sure. I'll, use, I'll use a bay with you know, a different Pinto's markings, or I'll... I'll find several different references of a certain pose right because I, I want it to be fresh I, I feel like if I copy from one reference exactly they tend to get stiff too so if you have multiple references so I just dug through my body box and I think I started um goodness not too it was in the fall because i knew the last two years i cut it close i had big aspirations for making it early that didn't happen <laughs> <It did. laughs> but i started i got started way earlier so i found the bodies i uh, i did the reveal they i started with a weather girl and the lip is on her mare so i had <laughs> no one no one guessed i it seemed now I didn't want to fight so much. The last two times I used a more vintage no uh, model. No, I used John Henry for the last Bronc and a, yeah. uh, um, what's the little jumper pony? So I used Newsworthy for a Southpaw. Okay. Um, wow. But I wanted to be, I wanted to use more of the model as an armature this time around. So I wanted to pick a finely limbed, a little more slim bodied model uh, because A, I wanted them to be lighter and B, I thought it would help my proportions if I based it more on a more accurate model, a, a newer one. And I think they're yeah. both by Br Brigitte Eberl, so yeah. she, she really knows her proportions. So 
picked those because they were of a similar size and girth and everything. And they have pretty nice legs to help me along because lower legs is still something I'm working very much on with sculpting. Yeah, they're hard. So chopped them up, repositioned them. I'll, I can send you pictures too of some of the process if you want to yeah. include that on the video. Yes, please. And the I wanted them both to be on one foot. This was going to be the tricky part. <laughs> so that's why I had this. Hold on. <laughs> so I went to Home Depot. Oh. I got. What do they call it? It's like... Round bar. That's what it is. Okay. So you can get them, you know, a couple bucks. So I. Okay. It's thick and it's very strong. You need you need bolt cutters to cut them, oh. which my father-in-law has those. So, uh, so it's heavy duty and it's literally well. Let me. So here's Max. Um, the lighting isn't great. Sorry. No, you're so okay. he has a peg, but that round bar is running all the way up through his body to his shoulders. Oh, so I wow. wanted to make sure he had a lot of support. Um, is it easy to bend then? No, it takes some, it takes some doing yeah. and same with him. Okay. Yeah. Peg, it goes all the way up and I curved it to his shoulders. So, um, they're sturdy. They're not going anywhere. <laughs> right. Because I knew it would have to be really strong to not flex and bend and crack and everything. Right. So I made sure it was heavy duty, but not so thick that I would be fighting it when if I to make their cannon bones, you know, the right size and everything. So place that kind of um, winged it with the peg, just like it's roughly good. We'll figure it out when we make the base. <laughs> so definitely got them into their positions. Uh, they actually like all of their plastic is covered. Even though the legs were there as landmarks, everything on them is new. There's no original plastic showing. Uh, the real, <laughs> what was really funny was when I was doing um, Mad Max is the lunging roan, and he's the weather girl. So he, when I was starting with his muzzle, he still had that super dished face. So he looked really weird for a while. <laughs> <laughs> Fat body with the head. <laughs> he was the problem child. So just because his proportions were harder to get. And I don't know if it's because the, the lip is on her mare. It, actually her hind foot that is up was pretty close to what I wanted for Warboy to be doing because he's on one hind foot and the other one is raised up like this. Cause yeah. he's Trying dodging away. away. Yeah. So <laughs> I felt like I fought, he, he went pretty swimmingly through the whole process. Warboy was trickier, I'm sorry, Mad Max was trickier because he's also twisting his head. He's biting mm -hmm. and he's twisting his head. So figuring out the proportions, finding all my references. Then uh, we were, I was getting pretty close to done. They had most of their work done. And I actually, Erica helped me with this. I said, is it, there's something off about him? What is it? So part of it was the stifle on his supporting leg was too far forward, too thick. I had to cut a giant chunk out of his stifle area. Mm. And his mane was, I was going for that dreadlock thing that they get because when the wind tangles their hair, they end up with these dreadlocks. Yeah. This mane is not his first one. So she, she pointed out the composition there. It was just awkward. Like there was an area that was pretty cool. And then the other one kind of messed up with the line of his withers. So I was just like, forget it. I <laughs> ripped it off <laughs> and started over. So going back to what we were saying about sometimes you just start over and it's way better. Mm -hmm. Now this came back to bite me because it was really hard to sculpt because there's all these, there's tight little individual dreadlocks and it was even worse to paint. <laughs> yeah, oh my gosh, you're like trying to like get So in. I am really glad I have an airbrush because I could spray into all those crevices and get them. So- How did you use like, what did you um, use to support? Like, was it just normal wire that you used? I definitely, uh, wires mostly for his mane because it's very PC. Yeah. Uh, Warboy was aluminum sheeting. 
because okay. his is more just flow. Smooth. Yeah. And same with the tail. Um, and then like I'd get uh, these again. So this was a lot of aluminum sheeting too, but there's also wire in here in the individual mm -hmm. parts. I'm really trying to up my game with um, mains and make them more PC because I I want a very realistic look and horses' manes aren't cartoony little, you know. You, you have to you have to make some compromises because you can't make it as thin as the real horses, but you can see that it's very yeah very PC and it's twisted. Subtle. It's it's easier to see in person. Uh, he's got a lot of like twists and turns and where it's it's curved on itself because um i i really want to up my hair game so i i he's they are my best hair so far yeah of course there's things that could be better but i'm really happy with them they're definitely my best work so far but i my dad helped me with the base we figured out where they need to be placed because they needed to be just so and what was funny was we set the base with the drill, the holes in it, and but, you know, war, uh, Max is biting, going for the throat. Yeah. When we put him in the base, he was here. <laughs> it was oh, too no. low. <laughs> so my dad said, oh, you're going to have to put an acrylic peg in there to hold up his front because he's too heavy. And I was like, no, I, I specifically wanted him to be on one foot. Where are your pliers? So I changed the angle of the peg and it put him right where he needed to be. Uh, so it's more of the winging it. You just have to try something. If it's not working the way you want, just try try something. The worst it can do is fail and you have to yeah. start over or do something different. So they are very strong. Like I've learned a lot with them. I, I can't tell you how many times they clunked into each other when I was sculpting or you know hit the table really hard. They are sturdy. <laughs> which is um, after Southpaw and his legs, I wanted to make sure they were really strong. I'm not suggesting that you chuck them off the table, but they, they're holding up well. And yeah. so definitely, definitely a, a learning, they, I learned a lot with them. And actually what happened, I was getting them ready through the fall and the winter. And then there was the MEPSA contest where it was the everyone sculpted San Domingo. Yeah. So actually he's right here. <laughs> so I actually took a break from them and worked on this guy. He's awesome. You have like a and thing for Mustangs. I do. I went through a Mustang phase. So his tail and, and mane and his legs really helped me learn a lot that I was able to put with the Mustang, with the boys, the fighting boys. So I'm really glad I took that break because I learned a lot. I was able, he was kind of a, almost a test piece for some things. Yeah. So I was able to practice on him and, you know, step up and then stepped up more with them. And then as far as uh, painting, uh, <laughs> I started later than I should have. So there was some <laughs> scrambling at the end. They do have a bit of acrylic on the last part. Oh. I decided to just make it work. <laughs> Not my favorite thing. I'll probably go back and I would like to roan Max more. Um, he he didn't. I really wanted that silvery blue roan look, mm -hmm. but every time you spray pencil, they tend to fade a little bit yeah. into the in the background color. So I don't know if I have to go back with paint on him or if I'll just have to do a few more pencil layers. Mm. I'm still really happy with them. Yeah, they're I great. I feel like I'm rambling about them again. Oh, no. and then the base. <laughs> Then the base, this is the first time I've ever done a base like this. Yeah, okay. So my dad, my dad helped me cut the piece because I wanted a very kind of organic, I didn't want this big square rectangle. Uh, I wanted this oblong shape to kind of follow the line of their movement. And then my father-in-law showed me how to plane it. I literally hand planed it so it would taper down. Uh. And whoo, I think it took an hour and a half and I was <laughs> sore after that, but yeah. it definitely, because I didn't want the base to be too big. I didn't want to add on to it. Yeah. And uh, Erica, again, helped me out. She Because she's done bases. I was like, how do I do this? What do I put on it? She said, get plaster paper. Mm -hmm. So pla put plaster on it. Got a bunch of diorama stuff from Hobby Lobby. It's the first time I've ever done this. Yeah. And just, it was, it was fun. It was actually kind of fun to just throw things at it. It was yes. less precise than the horses. So it was just it's like, ah, awesome. put a thing here, put it there. And... 
Um, and my father-in-law, I'm trying to think of if there's something else on here. Like there's there's rocks in there, there's little pebbles. I wanted to make it. Yeah, so the funny thing of that is that was not in the original plan at all. Oh. My, I was sharing pictures with both our families as we, uh, during the process, because they like they like the updates. And my father-in-law joked, he's like, hey, you should have a pair of fighting scorpions on there. <laughs> I thought, that's actually really cool. I'm not going to tell I'm going to do it until I know that I can. And I could not find any scorpions in scale. Yeah. Because who wants scorpions <laughs> that small? So their earrings their stud yes. earrings i yes. i looked on etsy and they were little stud earrings and the thing they had their little pinchers like this and the tail curved around and attached to their body probably to make sure that they wouldn't snap you know to make them stronger so i took wire clippers made a couple snips used wire uh pliers to bend them into shape and primed and painted them and they're awesome. their earrings so <laughs> genius so he, he appreciated he appreciated that i that i did that yeah so yeah and i literally finished i did my last details the night of the deadline and i set up for photos and i got my entry in two minutes before the deadline oh. and it was the most terrifying hour of my life <laughs> <laughs> yeah i'm sure because because my um i got a camera for christmas because my phone camera i i'm not techie i think i may have mentioned that and I wanted a camera that I could learn the ropes of and that could transfer photos to my phone, which is great, except it died in the middle of taking pictures. <laughs> so You're joking. Uh. Through the through the battery thing in the charger, started taking pictures with my phone just in case, got it up, got the battery up to 20%, put it back on the camera, took more <laughs> pictures, got my photos in at well, it's it's Eastern time was the deadline. So it was 10.57 p.m. <laughs> I'd be sweating. I'm sweating thinking <laughs> yeah. about it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I had a question too about like the tails. Um, yeah. When you have them like branching off into little pieces and stuff, how mm -hmm. do you attach that like in the armature in a way that is easy and like stable to sculpt onto? Uh... <laughs> Still figuring that out. <laughs> okay, yeah, because that's one thing I'm. I, gonna... uh, let's see, I'm trying to think, because I I put a a thicker gauge wire into their body, and I try to make sure it's it's in their body a good ways because if you only have a little bit in, it's, it's more likely hold. to, you know, it's not going to hold. So I will. Sometimes I'll either I'll I'll fork a wire and put that end in so you have two two mm -hmm. wires coming out that you can um, manipulate like a little bouquet of wires coming okay. out. Of course, you don't want to do too thick because then the tailbone is going to be too thick. Right. The tail, yeah. The tailbone true. is an extension of the spine, so you don't want it to be a tree trunk. <laughs> uh, so I've I've dealt with get make sure you have good wire tools because if you have if you have good pliers that can wrap it around and secure it, and then you slap on some epoxy. Um, I do my mains and tails in stages. Mm -hmm. So I don't try to do it all in one go. Yeah. I'll make the armature and I'll put that first established coat of epoxy on it. And that way you let it dry and then you can add more detail to it, dremel it down if needed. Right. Because if you try to do it all at once, you're just gonna have this squishy mess that moves yeah. around. Yeah. So that, that's how I keep it secure. That's what's been working for me so far. I'll let you know okay. if I find anything better. Yeah. Good but, yeah. to know. <laughs> yeah, because that's one thing I've been struggling with lately, and I think I would just need to be more patient with it, honestly. Mm -hmm. But I didn't and know don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to go back and dremel it down if you have to. Mm. You're just basically you're you have your I do armature, first coat, detail coat, tweak it if I need to. Um, yeah. Good to know. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I'm not a fan of drumming everything I do, but it happens. <laughs> yeah, it needs to be done sometimes. Ah, uh, yes. All right. Because it takes a while. Yeah. So we kind of covered a, a little bit of this, but like, what would be your, like, your tips for those that want to get to where you are? Oh, shucks. Should I be, am I qualified to answer that question? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> thank you. I'm honored. Um, 
I have, well, I have lots of opinions on this. I would say, and I'm, I've learned a lot from other artists and I agree with a lot of artists that have, have spoken on the subject already. Just try it. Don't be afraid to try something. You will not, I, I grew up being a child who would try something and would give up because it wasn't perfect. Mm. Years, I would not draw people. And now, and finally I started drawing people and could do it, but I wish I had started earlier because I would have been far, farther along. You, you can't get to a destination if you don't make steps. You're not going to, mad, you can't teleport yet. So <laughs> your skills won't teleport either if you just wait and wait and wait. Uh, I think the best thing I ever did was finally jumping in there and painting my first resin a few years ago. Instead of waiting, oh, I'll wait until I'm good. I'll wait until, I'm, just paint the thing. Yeah. It's, every, everyone starts differently. You, you're going to find different things that work. I would say study as much as you can. I, the best thing, I was homeschooled. The best thing I've gotten from that is my mom always said, if you want to learn something, look it up. Mm. If I, I probably drive my coworkers crazy because I'm always, if they ask something, I say, Google it. <laughs> Do your own research, find out, try it. I, I joke, wing it. Just try it. The worst that can happen is it's wrong. It messes up. You have to start over. Don't be afraid. Don't be f so afraid of failure that you don't try something. Mm. Because again, it's just model horses. You're yep. not. It's not driving. <laughs> it's not operating heavy machinery. It's not sending a spaceship up to Mars. It's it's just model horses. And I understand that there's value. You know, you don't want to destroy a three hundred dollar resin, but sure. just just try something. Uh, study, read, look at videos, watch horses, ride horses, groom horses, get your hands on them. Look for those little, those little nuances. Uh, study other people's stuff. Don't be afraid to try their stuff. Don't be afraid to try new things. You don't have to follow everything to the letter to be an artist or effective or do it right. There's the fun thing about art is there's really no right way to do it. Yeah. Learn all the rules and then break them. Yeah, so exactly. I've I've had so many people say you you have to do acrylics in thin tiny la layers to do whites and I say no. <laughs> I'm not <laughs> going to do it that way cuz I don't like it. Yeah. So try and it may or may not work for me. I'm still figuring that out. Uh I would say be open to critique. I'm not saying someone should be able to just walk up to you and say your horse is ugly and you should throw it away. That's rude. Yeah. <laughs> um, but also develop, but if someone says something they're trying and they're trying to help you, that's a good thing because it'll help you grow. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's about, and you don't have to take everyone's word for it. If someone says, ah, oh, your horse's back is too long, take that information with a grain of salt and go figure out if that's the case. Because yeah. to be perfectly honest, there's a lot of horses with really long backs. Horses are longer than a lot of people think they are. Um, oh, that, that looks weird. That looks disproportionate. Take that go. Thank you. You don't, I understand that some people can come across really rude or harsh. But if you can develop a th thick skin and take that and help you get better, then that's going to help you grow and get yeah. better as an artist. So true. Couldn't have said um, it better myself. <laughs> yeah. And then just don't get discouraged. If you mess up, you, you don't, I, I've stolen this quote uh, <laughs> and have changed it to suit me. <laughs> Conor McGregor, the MMA fighter says, I don't lose, I win or I learn. So you don't, you're not going to fail. You're either going to succeed or you're going to learn from it. Yeah. So, and again, this is the aggressively optimistic person that I am. So. <laughs> no, it's great though. It, yeah. It's true. You really have to have kind of that tenacity to keep going and to push past the like, oh, I hate what I'm doing. Because yeah. if you don't get through the bad pieces, you're never going to make something that like you're actually proud of. Yeah. And another, another thing I've learned, which I've struggled with, I think all artists struggle with this is the it's not good, it's ugly, it's not good enough, it doesn't look right. Your, then people have, have described it in different ways. Um, your critical eye is going to develop and your skills are going to develop and they don't always develop at the same speed. Yes. So you'll have, your skills are here 
your critical eyes here and you're like, ah, I love everything. And then your critical eye will get better <laughs> and you hate everything you ever do until your skills get up. So it's always, it's constantly a back and forth thing. Yeah. So if you can just learn, it's like, it's okay. I just can't get this right right now. Um, you'll, you'll get there eventually if you keep going. Yeah. And if you need to take a break, take a break, do something else, do something mm -hmm. fun, go paint a, a tie dye horse or right. sculpt a real, Oh, <laughs> I should show you the weird thing I'm doing. Oh. <laughs> what? Do you, do you want to see the weird horse? Yes. Oh What's... my gosh. Yes, please. So <laughs> sometimes you just have to have fun. Yeah. And I'm hoping I will actually have this horse pretty much finished and showing before this airs because I think it's, but you get a sneak peek. Oh, um, sweet. <laughs> so I, I also, I love horses and realism and stuff, but I love fantasy. Oh, so me too. I love doing unicorns, but I also love doing just weird things that no one has ever done. So yeah. I feel like winged horses get a big thing. There's even been dragon horses and lizard horses, but I grew up playing in the woods. Where's all the bug love? Uh, yes, wait, this is show a, this me. Is a G, this is a G1. Oh, uh, yes, this is the spider one, is it? Yes! <laughs> oh my gosh, that's amazing. <laughs> she is so creepy and I love her. It so, <laughs> so this is, I, I love spiders. I don't want to play with them. I admire them. They eat yeah. and all that. And they're just fascinating creatures. So I just thought, you know what? No one's ever done a spider horse. Let's do this. So have fun. Just don't forget to have fun. Yeah. So always be happy to always be eager to learn and have fun while you're doing it and learn from other people so that's basically me summing that up yeah so important <laughs> so last couple questions here um we're getting deep <laughs> oh um, no <laughs> <laughs> overall uh what does the hobby mean to you hmm well i think Oh no, deep question. I must compose myself. Um, <laughs> it's definitely, it's definitely a creative outlet for me. It's a way to explore. It's, it's a way to learn. Um, I've always been interested in horses. I am fascinated by the fact that this giant, heavy animal can be so strong, so fast, and yet can be incredibly gentle. I've learned so much from my horses. I'm, I've become a better person because of my horses. Mm. Uh, horses are inherently kind to be, at least in my experience, there are some horses out there who are not so <laughs> nice, that's but like I think anything. that's the, I think that's the exception to the rule. Yeah. To be perfectly honest. Um, so it's definitely a creative outlet. I, I've always loved painting and sculpting and drawing. And I think it's a way to express, it's a, another way to express yourself because horses depict, horses are very emotionally intelligent. I've heard people say, mm -hmm. which is very true. They, they express themselves so well. And I love to capture that. Even if it's just the horse is sleepy or the horse is relaxed or the horse is... <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> no. Trying to bite the other one's head off. It's <laughs> it's fun. It's so much fun. I really do enjoy the the friends I've made, the connections I've made. Um I just it's it's I just think it's a very unique uh part of art. So Yeah, I, I agree. I'm not explaining that very well. No, no, they're they're such amazing creatures to even let us like ride mm -hmm. them and they're just they're so um, you're right. They're so kind-hearted, and I think forgiving. Yeah, so like they forgiving. let you mess up, and they let you get back on the next day. Yeah, right? <laughs> they totally don't have to do that. Like, yeah, so true. Yeah. Um, now this could be related to the art side of the hobby, or just in general. I'm just curious. What's one thing that you would like to see more of in the hobby? Um, I made a note on this. <laughs> I, what I love is all the, I want to, I would love to keep seeing all this unique stuff coming because I'm, I'm mostly into the hobby for the artwork aspect of it. 
I have nothing against collecting or all the fun things that come with that. Um, I really am interested in pushing myself and in an art aspect of it. Mm-hmm. Um, I love seeing all these creative things with yeah, like, like the light up, like Takeshi. Oh my yeah. word, <laughs> stuff like that. Um, yeah, all the all the pieces we're seeing where people are really bumping it up with with performance and extreme customs and different unique things. I'd love to see. We were also talking about that with like the less perfect horses, you mm-hmm. know, horses who aren't standing perfectly square. Maybe they've got a leg out or, you know, they're sleepy or, <laughs> you know, one's missing an ear tip, stuff like that. Capturing and more, more rare stuff. Um, mm. you know, there's, there's lots of quarter horses in thoroughbreds. Why, why not show, you know, a Swedish, North, Northern Swedish horse or, and they, they are getting more popular too, but I love seeing yeah. those get more popularity and more knowledge. Cause I feel like every time I go to a model horse show, I learn about a new breed. Right. Cause I I've been, I've been reading <laughs> and learning about horses since I was old enough to read, you know, I had my nose in a book from the time I was six years old and I still learned something new. And then I learned, you know, oh, this horse can come in this color or this pattern, or oh, there was a mutation here, and there's this random organ who has a roan pattern. It's really fascinating. Yeah. I learned more about different horse sports and stuff. Um, so I just, I would love to see more of that. I'd, uh, I'd love to see more storytelling pieces where it's not necessarily a model that can you know, do a ton. It's just, it's a, it's a piece that tells a, a story in and of itself, mm-hmm. which is kind of what my Mustangs did. You know, they're, you're yeah. not going to show them separately. They kind of have to go together. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They're, they're one of the same. Yeah. 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 That's so true. And like, you know, magnetic manes and tails and oh, horses so- with interchangeable parts. It's, uh, I, I do, I'm, I'm not done performance. I'm probably going to get sucked into it by a friend eventually <laughs> i i really i'm dragging my feet because it's just a whole other aspect that's it terrifying is. uh i love i love watching performance and seeing performance i'd love to judge performance someday but mm-hmm. just the different unique things and the setups i've always been that kid who liked tiny things my yeah. sister and i had had the american girl doll book that told you how to make you know tables out of the little yeah little support thing and pizza boxes and cups out of glue caps and stuff so yeah. I've always been fascinated by tiny miniature miniature stuff so I'm probably gonna make some more I, I would love to make a bunch of performance friendly horses or even I have an idea for next year's custom contest but it would be a lot of work so we'll see <laughs> we'll see right because <laughs> I'm doing it early next time yeah oh my gosh <laughs> yeah I I would find it hard I think to not be pushing the deadline every year no matter when I started but I pr- promised you for I lulled myself into a false sense of security it's like ah, I got time no yeah. <laughs> and then two no. weeks till the deadline ah. <laughs> <laughs> hurry <laughs> so um tell me about like what are your future goals short term or long term I have both um I definitely I always want to improve I even even when I have like the Mustangs are my best pieces so far, there's still spots just like, ah, I know what I could do better next time. I'm not gonna redo them or pick at them. They're done. I've also learned that. That's another thing. Learn when you're <laughs> learn when to be done and just move on to the next thing. Um I dreams. I would love to sculpt a horse for Briar someday. We'll see. I would love to do my own original sculpts. Um I actually started one, I wasn't planning on casting him. Like I'm probably, cause actually Maggie Bennett encouraged me. She said, just do your own original sculpts. Don't worry about casting them until you know you're ready to do it, which I think is really a valuable piece of advice. Cause then you don't have that pressure to like, oh my gosh, it has to be perfect. Yeah. Or you go too soon and then people, it's not well received because your, your confirmation or your anatomy or your proportions aren't good. Right. Cause that's always something, proportion has always been something that I've struggled with over the years. Like you'll see, if you ever looked at my sketchbooks, there were face like giant head, tiny head, hot dog body, long leg, short legs. It's as, as I was learning over the years. So I've looked back at some customs and went, oh my. 
<laughs> I think we all do it that was, though. But and that's again, that's the critical eye and the the skills. So yeah, I I'm definitely going to pursue. You know, I want to pursue sculpture. I want to get better at painting. I mean, I'm so inspired by people like Jen Scott and and uh, Sarah Hottinger are two of my favorites. Uh, Megan Lara, I might be saying her name wrong. She does beautiful work. Just these artists who have this glow. Mm. And oils, oils are always my favorite. I'm always going to be, I think I'm going to probably stick with those as my main medium. Um, I would like to, I mean, I, I work full time. I'm an opti I'm a frame and lens stylist at the mm. eye clinic I work at. Uh, I'm probably going to pursue getting, becoming a licensed optician because, wow. you know, job security. But if right. ever I had the chance to do this full time, I probably would consider it. Um, even if it's, you know, it might, it might happen in steps. I'm, sure. <laughs> I suffer from the, yeah, commissions are cool. And then I have to do them. It's like, no, oh, I want to do my own thing more. I think that's <laughs> pretty common for artists is yes. it's, I think when you get put in a box, you feel less creative. So yeah. um, I've only taken a few, I've been very selective about my commissions and I'm probably, I'm not gonna take on more just cause I, if I was doing this full time, maybe. But right, but for Working now. full time and yeah. all my other stuff is like, mm, let's not, <laughs> let's not play that game. And I just wanna keep, you know, going outside the box and trying new things. Like, I'm really happy that I was successful with two horses fighting and they're both standing on one leg. So if I can keep doing stuff like that, I, I want to explore that. Um, just unique stuff that people may not have, you don't typically see, you know, rearing, playing horses, horses goofing off, being silly, ho horses being horses. Yeah. Um, I want to get better at sculpting babies, though babies are hard. Mm -hmm. Babies are hard. Proportions um, just kind of go out. Woo, and yeah. just the, the lankiness and the, the angularities and stuff. So yeah. I, and legs, legs are so uh, hard. Legs and ears. <laughs> mm -hmm. I feel you. So I should just sculpt a bunch of ears to get better at it. They're hard <laughs> to draw. Like I, ears are hard to draw too. I don't know yeah. what it is about ears, but they are the bane of my existence. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're so odd. Yeah. So definitely, if I could pursue it professionally, totally would. We'll see. We'll see um, if that happens. Yeah. Um, but definitely, I'm going to, because I've always been doing art, I'm going to continue to do art, even if it's not my job. Yeah. That's amazing. Just something I'm very passionate about. And, yeah. you know, God allows me to do it full time. I'll do it full time. Yeah. But we'll see. That's awesome. Great goals. <laughs> I'd like to turn this last little bit kind of over to you. Plug your work. Tell people where they can find you and you know what to expect. Things like that. Oh no, self promotion. I'm bad at this. <laughs> um, well, I you'll find most of my stuff on West Wind Studio on Instagram. There is another West Wind Studio. She's the West Wind Studio. <laughs> she does jewelry, so. <laughs> I've gotten we've gotten tagged in different stuff multiple times uh -huh. uh, I follow her anyway because her stuff is cool um I do have West Wind Studio equine art on Facebook I don't post on that as much like I said earlier uh I'm trying to do it more it's just a little more difficult to get content on there um but I'm also not tech savvy I need to work on that <laughs> I'm I want to get um I have a friend who said she'd um, get my logo done for me. So I need to sketch that out. Yeah. So yeah. Um, I'm definitely, I have a ton of painted pieces that are going to be coming down the line. Um, I will definitely plan on going to Briarfest next year if it happens, because I have, I, if I finish all these projects, <laughs> I then I'm going to have a lot of horses to show yeah. off. And, um, I definitely like keep, keep, watching the Instagram. If you're okay with seeing a bunch of in-progress messy photos, keep watching there because I have a lot of pieces coming. Mm -hmm. I have some drastic ideas. I have um, the the Eberl with the swooshy mane. He's going to be an appy. He's going to be really cool. And then just some other projects that I haven't really posted a lot of that are going to get some attention on there. And I don't have... I feel like after I entered... The contest is a little lull like i kind of take a right. creative hiatus 
<laughs> but I probably will start planning on some more drastic customs because I think they're too much fun. And I really want to do something epic for next year too. Mm. So we'll, we'll see. I don't know what division I'm going to do yet. Um, <laughs> I'm sure it'll be great. So it, it's exciting. Awesome. I think it's exciting. Yeah, so it's great. Exciting. <laughs> thank you so much for being on the show. I really appreciate well, it. Thank you for having me. It's been fun to kind of come full circle because we've been, like we said, we've been buddies since the beginning. So yeah. <laughs> I'm honored that you'd have me. All right, you guys, that was the episode. Thank you guys so much for watching. Definitely go ahead and check out Ray. I will leave all of the links below in the description as well as links to any of the tools and materials that we talked about that I can get a hold of. If you have any specific questions though about anything that we talked about in the episode, definitely go ahead and DM Ray on Instagram. I'm sure she would be happy to answer any questions that any of you guys have. Stay tuned for next week's episode featuring Shane of Wiggleworx Studio. Where do I even start with Shane? <laughs> Shane, you are so talented. The detail work that Shane does is absolutely insane from her eyes to the little ticking of the hairs her detail work in general is just absolutely fabulous and she's a fellow oils artist so I was excited to sit down with her and talk to her about all things hobby art. Her episode airs next week. She is the second to last episode of season two so you're definitely going to want to go ahead and tune into that. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys next week.